a warm welcome and great appreciation to all who are gathered here with us this afternoon. Fellow Americans, Israeli friends, families of the 9-11 victims, and families of victims of other acts of terror, including the bereaved families for peace and justice, members of the diplomatic corps, among them representatives of countries who also lost citizens on 9-11, Minister Yuval Steinitz, representing the government of Israel, National Fire and Rescue, Rescue Commissioner Shachar Ailon, honored guests. Let me off, offer, also offer a special thanks to our friends and co-sponsors from Karen Kayyem at Israel and the Jewish National Fund, Mr. Effie Stenzler, Mr. Mayor Spiegler, and their colleagues. We are gathered to remember and to honor the memory of those lost on this day 12 years ago. We also take a moment to remember and honor four colleagues of those of us in the State Department, Ambassador Chris Stevens, Sean Smith, Glenn Doherty, and Tyrone Woods, whose lives were lost in Benghazi one year ago today. But today we remember a day that began like so many others, with rides to school and commutes to work, early flights for meetings and familiar routines, with fleeting hugs and quick goodbyes. It was a normal day, like this one, with a clear blue sky. But it quickly became an infamous day, one that would be filled with black clouds of smoke, a day when our nation and much of the world would be shaken to its core, a day when nearly 3,000 innocent people were cut down in the prime of life. Even now, 12 years later, we can each remember exactly where we were when we witnessed those horrific scenes. When civilized people the world over held each other in shock, seeing the world that we thought we knew crumbling before us. To the bereaved families with us today from this and other attacks of terror, we cannot begin to imagine the pain you've endured these many years. We will never fully understand how difficult it has been for you to carry on and to summon the strength to rebuild your lives. In this heartbreakingly beautiful memorial plaza, in the shadow of the sculpture lovingly created by Eliezer Weishoff, we remind the families of those lost and we remind people everywhere that we stand together, Americans and Israelis, and that even as we still mourn, together we continue to heal and to build in a spirit of solidarity and commitment to the future. And no people anywhere in the world can understand the pain Americans feel today more than the Israeli people. Our shared experiences with terrorism is one more link in the unbreakable chain that binds our countries and our peoples. This terrible event itself saw the blood of Americans and Israelis spilled together. And so as we mourn, we also add our voices of comfort to the families of the Israeli victims of 9-11, Daniel Lewin, Leon Leban, Chagai Shefi, Shai Levenhar, and Alona Avraham, Yizichram Baruch. This year, we gather in the most meaningful and poignant time on the Jewish calendar. We meet between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, Aseret Yimei Tshuva, 10 days of repentance, a period of introspection. The Torah teaches that we are all created in the image of God, B'Tselem Elohim, which asserts implicitly the uniqueness and value of every single human being. Therefore, each life lost represents a precious and unique individual, an entire world who has no replacement and no substitute. Rosh Hashanah is also known as Yom Hazikaron, the Day of Remembrance, 
And one of the main sections of the prayer service we recited last week is zichronot, remembrances, a time to remember our personal histories and our behavior toward others during the previous year. Why is remembering so important? Why are we here again 12 years later in remembrance of those nearly 3,000 people killed on that awful day? Some might ask, isn't it time that we put this tragedy behind us? Sometimes people will say to us when we're grieving, you must not keep thinking about the past. The past is gone. You've got to focus on the future. Well, as well-meaning as that advice might be, it's misguided. For reminiscing, recalling events, conversations, a loved one's touch, occurrences of the past, is one of the important ways we mourn. Memory is basic to the life of all human beings. We cannot stop remembering the people and their connection to us, which were a fundamental part of our lives. History is an exercise in remembering, not forgetting. And the events of 9-11 are now part of our collective memory and our collective history. But remembering is also important as we think of the future we seek to build, a future without terror and a future of peace and reconciliation. A future where all our children and our grandchildren can live side by side in peace, security, and cooperation. This year, Rosh Hashanah and this ceremony coincide with a criti critical and hopeful juncture in the search for peace in this land. We commend Prime Minister Netanyahu and President Abbas for their courageous leadership in agreeing to come together once again to negotiate and to try to finally achieve the goal of two states for two peoples living side by side. The United States is committed to assisting the parties and to facilitating their negotiations aimed at reaching an agreement that ends this conflict and provides peace and security for all. As today we stand together and share in the tragedy of September 11, 2001, Israel and the United States share a deep friendship, a rock-solid security alliance strong economic bonds, a shared spirit of in innovation, and a shared history of triumph and tragedy. All of these shared experiences are based on a foundation of shared values to increase liberty, equality, and justice for all our citizens, to ensure security and preserve peace for our peoples, and to do what we can to help the citizens of all countries live freer, more prosperous, and more democratic lives. No country can take democracy for granted, and the challenges to both of our country's democracies never cease. We each have a responsibility to do everything possible to protect and to sustain our democracies from all threats to their survival, including the threat of terrorism. The choice of Israel as the first overseas visit of President Obama's second term was emblematic of the strong and unbreakable bilateral alliance between the United States and Israel. It was an opportunity to reaffirm our deep and enduring ties. And our shared commitment to work to solve the challenge, common challenges we face, including the search for peace between Israel and Palestinians, the challenge of Iran, and the challenge of Syria. Today, the focus is on Syria and our determination to deter the Assad regime which has used chemical weapons to murder over 1,400 people, including 4, 400 children, from using such horrific weapons ever again, and from degrading its ability to do so. President Obama has made clear that we are prepared to use force to uphold this norm, even as we will also explore diplomatic efforts to achieve this goal. But our resolve should not be in doubt. Meanwhile, we will continue to support the Syrian people through our pressure on the Assad regime, our commitment to strengthen the legitimate opposition, our provision of humanitarian assistance, and our pursuit of a political resolution that achieves a government that respects the dignity of the Syrian people and ensures that the Syrian people, like the Israeli people, and all people of this region and all people in the world can live without the shadow of fear of terror. Today, we honor the memories of those we lost 12 years ago. Although their families, and indeed all of us, can never be made whole, with the passage of each year, we strive to draw strength from their memories, and inspired by their deeds and their humanity, 
work to build a better, safer, more peaceful world. I'd like to wish everyone here a Shana Tova, Tikatevu Vitikatemu. May you be inscribed and sealed for a good year, and let us all hope for a year of peace in this region. Thank you.